perspective. Uh, Scott and Melissa Black have bombshell salon. How many have seen their little truck, the little van that goes around? I'm so interested in knowing what's inside. Like, what's going on? Is there some woman, like, getting her hair blown dry as she goes down the road? I need that, actually, by the way. You can pick me up in the morning. I get to work, like, so much earlier. <laughs> Bombshell offers tanning, hair, nail, and waxing services. Uh, Scott Melissa launched his business in 2009 in Carytown. It was recently named one of the 25 fastest growing companies in the Richmond region. It also has a location in Short Yes, thank you. A location in Short Pump and a third location on Commonwealth Center Parkway in Midlothian and another location. We'll leave that for a moment. I'll let you guys talk about that other location. Um, I love this. Old fashioned hustle, right? Oh yeah. I have a little pink notebook and it all it says on it is hustle. <laughs> That's what it takes. A serendipitous collision led to their other location. I'm going to, again, just tease it up and let them talk about what that is all about. Um, but they brought some magic to, Rich to the Richmond beauty scene with their small tanning and waxing uh, room in 2009. Um, uh, a really, uh, seriously, a unique idea and they brought in stylists that are continually, continually getting educated about how they do their business. Paul and Paula and Martin Ramirez own historic Mankin Mansion. And I call this a reno of historic proportions. When the Ramirez family came to Virginia in 2003 from their native west coast in search of a magnificent home, Steeped in history, they found all of their dreams in the Mankin Mansion. Collectively, Martin and Paula have been in the wedding industry for over 40 years. It's kind of hard to believe. <laughs> Started three. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they took on this amazing um, reno project, renovation project. I'm an HGTV addict, by the way. I don't actually turn the station. Yeah. My husband gets like, really? Like, we have cable. <laughs> I just love it. So it's really interesting. Love to hear more about that. They started in 2004, and they bought the mansion. They didn't just renovate it. They brought it back to its or original splendor, which I know I was in the museum business for a couple of years earlier. And I know that that's a very expensive project because you can't just, you know, slap paint on a wall. So not only did they bring it back, they brought it back and to the point where it was registered on the National Register of Historic Landmarks. And it's an award-winning wedding venue. They purchased the home in really neglected state. It's a 7,000 square foot mansion and they went to work to make it what it is today. And so I'd like to go ahead and get started, but uh, I welcome Paula and Martin and also Melissa and Scott. And uh, so I'd like to give you a moment to just say a couple of words about your business. One of you from each couple, just kind of, you know, tee it up, because I'm sure I, I did some mining in your website and you sent me some information, but what would you like to share with um, our audience about your businesses? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what I'd like to share about our business, Bombshell, is really the grassroots of how it started. And that was back in 2009 during the economic downturn when Melissa was the general manager of a prominent salon here in Richmond and she got let go and she needed to return to her roots as a master esthetician to wax and tan again to make ends meet. So she found a little room in a huge building in Carytown, rented that room, and just started building one client at a time. She started off with one client. And she grew so quickly that she needed more space, and we took over the rest of that building eventually over the next eight months and turned it into a full-blown salon. And it gained so much traction that over the next four years, we, we gained a clientele database in Richmond of 70,000. Which is big because Richmond is not that not that big. I think this is just to be just a little bit about it. So. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously. <laughs> if, if I was trying to hold you back, I'd hold the mic. Don't worry. <laughs> I do feel like I'm the only one that hasn't gone to bombshell. Seventy thousand. Wow, that's so awesome. That, that deserves a round of applause. My God. Wow. 
grassroots. It starts out one, one customer at a time and just building those relationships. And that's what we're doing here today is building relationships. And I think that's, that's what small business is about. Okay, thank you. Mom, Paul? <laughs> this is already interesting. I'm a talker. Who's getting the mic? Uh, so Mark and I had this grand plan in 2001 to research the country on where to live and where to raise our children. And uh, we researched through 28 states. Actually, we researched the country, but then drove through 28 states and um, fell in love with Virginia. Everyone was startlingly kind. We, we didn't even know that kind of kindness existed to a stranger, which is very unique, I think, to Virginia. And um, so back in 2004, um, my, I worked uh, in physical therapy, geriatrics, and all my coworkers knew that we were looking for a historic home to turn into a wedding venue. And we homeschooled the kids and everything. So um, it was a big dream, and we were here for about a year and a half. And then my um, coworker and a girlfriend of mine handed me the front page of the Richmond Times Dispatch real estate section and said, you need to buy this mansion. And uh, anyway, you jump ahead to a week later, and I had our nest egg in my hand in a cashier's check. And put the winning bid on this dilapidated magical place and then called Martin and the kids and said, come see our mansion. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I thought it was... just like HGTV. It, <laughs> that was our inspiration, actually. Do you remember a show? Uh, sabbatical. Radical sabbatical. So people would quit their job, their full-time job, oh. and get up and move to wherever and live out their dream. And I'm like, honey, we're gonna do that. And yeah, yeah, so we did that. Um, so that was 2004, and um, like I said, I, I thought I was their hero, you know, our, our kids, and Martin would walk up and like, wow, this is amazing, you did this all by yourself. But it was April Fool's Day and it was gloomy and it was <laughs> kind of creepy outside. And then they came to pull up to this mansion, mansion, and um, I'm like, look, and they're like, you're not serious. <laughs> yeah, they weren't very excited, but now, 14 years later, they are very, very thankful that I was just crazy enough to, to put the winning bid on this dilapidated, beautiful mansion. Well, that actually spins right into my first question, so if you'll keep the mic. Sure. Um, one of the things I think that, I mean, there's probably lots of entrepreneurial ideas in this room, but maybe not the biggest obstacle, but one of the biggest obstacles is funding. Mm -hmm. So was that, I, I know you say you have this cashier's check, and it sounds very, it does sound kind of magical, you know, just... A lot of times, you know, I have a check, and I'm thinking that means I have money in the bank, but I don't know, there's some, like, disconnect sometimes, you know? Yeah. So, like, how do you just... <laughs> some of you got that, so I know. I know a lot about you right now. How do you fund this huge... This, is that one of the obstacles in starting your own business, yeah. funding? Well, I think the fear of not being funded, the fear of the money not being there. We had kind of uh, unwavering, blind faith in and our abilities and our connections and our being welcomed so openly uh, in Virginia. Now this was a rarity that it was a real estate loan first before it became a business loan. Um, so that was easier. Um, but then the challenge became when we sold our two houses in California and had gone through all that money restoring the mansion, then what? So that's when these magical people stepped in. And really, we had all this leveraged everywhere. And um, and then they helped us put it in a nice little nest egg and wrap it with a bow and put a, slapped a low interest rate on it and truly gave us a moment to breathe. So, um, you know, we worked hard and we paid our bills on time and watched our credit score get as high as it I think can possibly be. And um, it was amazing how simple it was to get funding. and But we had to put the work and, and the effort in first, yeah. Okay. What about your experience with that, um, Scott and Melissa, with funding? Yeah, funding was difficult in, in the beginning. And we, we put every single penny we had ever had into the first location. And it was difficult to get funding for us in the beginning because it wasn't a real estate. Uh, enterprise it was just strictly business so we just had to go on our hard work and sweat until we finally actually got to meet up with Tracy and Sona Bank which saw the potential in our business and were able to give us the breathing room that we needed to keep expanding our business so I'm hearing this um, and I didn't get paid to say this I'm hearing this continuous thread about Sona Bank 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you have to have the right funding, the right folks behind you, and, and uh, also there's a quote on that wall somewhere about not being scared. I saw it earlier, now I don't oh, yeah. see it. Do one thing every day that scares you. Yeah, about that. So what a nice tie-in. Uh, so while you have the, the, the mic, Scott, why a specialty salon? I mean, why not, you know, something else? Well, you kind of teed that up with the fact that Melissa was a hair, uh, is it cosmetology? Yeah, all that hurt. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was also, my degree in, is in hospitality. I had my license for a long time and then went into worked for uh, the Ritz Carlton and um, the West in that whole group, Starwood. Um, so when I first moved here to Richmond, um, there, there weren't a lot of five star hotels at the time. It was more like a, you know, I think the Sheraton was the, the biggest deal. So I came here and I'm like, I just I want that feeling of five star. And so um, the salon that I'd worked at kind of had a really good um, reputation, and it was kind of in line with the, you know, I wanted like a front desk concierge feeling. And but um, and then when that whole thing went bust, I I was like, the only place I'm gonna be able to go to is DC. And the thought of commuting to DC every day was like, no way. I'd rather be in LA traffic than that <laughs> any day. <laughs> Yeah, so, and that's when I thought, you know what, there's no, no place in Richmond where you can get, I'm sorry, I'm going to say a Brazilian wax, that is what my business is, was built on, for less than $90, which was crazy to me coming from the West Coast as well, where it was like, you know, affordable, sitting in between two colleges, and that's, and nobody was doing spray tanning. Organic wasn't even on the, I mean, no one even knew what that was here, so I think that's what it was. So since you said that, I mean... Virginia is fairly conservative, mm -hmm. and it occurred to me as I read through your very interesting website, <laughs> and I thought, really? You know, you just kind of say, hey, I got this business, and we're doing X, Y, and Z. Yeah. I mean, was there any pushback? Like, oh, yeah. what are you doing? You know? Yeah, and I think coming from the West Coast again is that, you know, now it's like you would ask them, like, where do you get your Botox done? Where do you get your waxing done? It's not like a secret, and it was very... Here, I'd literally see clients in the grocery <laughs> store, and they'd be like... But, like, I'm going to go up and go, how's your Brazilian doing? You know what I mean? So, I mean, it was, it was, I mean, it was the weirdest thing at first, but I think, you know, taking that customer service from the five-star industry, making him feel comfortable, where I have clients say, I feel like I'm having coffee with you, but I'm naked. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that that's, it, it's just, and it is, and I like to push the envelope a little bit. So I, I like that kind of, you know, joking around and teasing about it. A little more buttoned up now, though, I have to say. <laughs> well, but at the same time, if someone's talking to you that casually, it sounds like it's a very, and I, I'm sure it is, so, oh, yeah. but I'm just saying from the outside looking in, that sounds like a very professionally run organization. You have to be extremely professional. So, I mean, in regards to, yeah, yeah. exactly. I always say we're like doctors. I mean, there's a Hippocratic oak, ugh. Sorry, I've only had two hours of sleep. <laughs> those those that um, you have to take, and it's the same with a client. Like, I'm, we're very big on, you know, if anybody has anything to say about a client that they don't do it in the break room, like, they need to come to us personally. So I do, I take it. It's 100%. percent you got to be discreet. Awesome. Okay. That sounds wonderful. So um, I want to move into the whole Mary thing, you know, and if we could... You would pass the mic, if you don't mind, over to um, Martin and Paula. Um, so my question is, you know, we get in the weeds a little bit. Like, were you, well, actually, you answered this, because I was wondering if you were married first, and one of you, or you weren't married first, and who owned the business? But, so, Paula, you're the one who said, okay, we're going to own this. But And you gave us the um, PG-13 story. But, I mean, you know, you took this risk, and you had the vision but it doesn't sound like your family did. So Martin, what was your real reaction, you know? All of this money, and she sees a vision in an old house that, you know, the shutters are falling off of. What are we gonna do with this? What was your reaction to that? Uh, well, uh, as she said it was April 1st, so I thought she was totally just kidding with me, and, and it was just all a joke, but uh, no, she was serious, and I'm glad, I'm glad she was there by herself. She saw the glass half full, and I'm glad I didn't hold her hand down that, that, uh, that day at auction. Um, I, I feel that um, we just, uh, you know, because of our, our faith and our belief in what we we're doing, that, that it could happen. You know, it, it, the money, it just all 
kept working out for us. We, you know, we had a persistence, and, and uh, three months after we bought the place, uh, Tropical Gaston, Storm Gaston came through, uh, knocked out a couple of uh, walls, uh, being a historic property, and the, the, the original owner, Mr. Mankin, made the brick there. So 98% of the brick there is, was manufactured on site, and I can't go to Lowe's and just buy <laughs> Mankin brick anymore. So. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of challenges, a lot of uh, things that we had to, uh, you know, uh, take into consideration. But um, we kept chugging along, and, and you know, we, we are where we are now. So, with the National Register of Historic Places, I know there's like, you know, a huge manual. You know, like right. you have to kind of weave right. through it with all of the um, requirements and regulations. Were they sort of like on your back for how you were doing it? Was it a constant having to report to them? How does that work? Um, onto that because uh, we actually that was the aside from the property that was the one good thing that already existed when we bought the mansion so it was already registered uh, when we acquired it thankfully um, but then the restorations um, they kind of kept tabs on us but once they saw what we were about and who we were they stopped looking yeah they they were just happy we were doing what we were doing. Yeah, just a quick example of that was we uh, we had to have the roof replaced and it's a slate roof and because the slate is so heavy we checked it to is there alternatives but still keeping it historic and uh, they said as long as you get an engineer to prove that it's you know, structurally not going to uh, work then you could do something like imitation slate so that was something that we you know an example of always checking in with them and making sure that if we did something that was different but yet still true to the uh, to the historic uh, nature of it, you know, would that work? And, and so that was very helpful. So from the moment you started the renovation to the first wedding, and maybe the first dollar on the, you know, black side, so how long did that take? Oh. Uh, <laughs> What's today? <laughs> what? Well, we, we bought the, it was April of uh, 04 when we bought it, and we opened up in April of 06, with weddings taking usually a year for people to, to book out, so so even if, though we opened in April of '06, it wasn't until a year later that we started seeing the actual events, the money really coming in for that, and um, we did have a couple of minor weddings that was very helpful. It uh, helped us uh, see, you know, what things still needed to be done. But we had it just got it ready enough to where we could start at least, you know, promoting it and having weddings. Uh, our first pictures were, I think, New Year's. Eve or something like that. We had a, a couple come over, a couple models, and a, a friend photographer with a nice camera, and just take uh, close-up shots because the grounds, everything was dead in winter time. So yeah, we, we just did what we had to do to, to get start getting the word out. Smart. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So Scott, I have a question for you. So Melissa, we had the vision and the skills, licensing, and everything. So. How, what keeps you engaged? I mean, give me the waffles and spaghetti story, you know? Did you go, I'm not going to be involved in a salon, you know? Or are you more open-minded? I mean, how did that work? Well, I'm very open-minded to those types of things, and especially waffles and spaghetti, because in Las Vegas, when I go to a buffet, it typically has waffles and spaghetti. <laughs> Maybe even some boo boo bad you never know. But seriously, yeah, I was definitely open. Melissa and I have been together a long time, and she's always shown a propensity to being able to make this type of business work. And so I was behind it 100%. I, I knew she had the chops to not just deliver on the services, but on the vision of the brand. So are there any days when your vision for the next stage, and, and, and how did you, let's actually, whoop, this is my rewind button. So, Richmond, okay, you know, and you had some work to do to convince people, but what about the CEO of Zappos? Tell us how that happened and what that led to. That's crazy. No, you tell him. <laughs> okay, so you're referring to... It's we, his mother that did it to us. It's like blaming on his mom. It makes perfect sense that we expanded here in Richmond. We had the, the original shop in Carytown, then we expanded to Short Pump, and then out to the south side at, um, in Midlothian. And the next logical place to go is 2,500 miles west to Las Vegas, Nevada, <laughs> just to keep things all in the same, you know, theme. But actually, how that happened was my my mother sent me an article from the Phoenix Sun talking about Tony Shea, who is the CEO of Zappos. Tony sold Zappos to Amazon for 1.2 billion dollars uh, about 10 years ago, and he was renovating the downtown area of Las Vegas. 
And in that renovation, he was creating entrepreneurial activity, tech, residential, all kinds of things in downtown Las Vegas. And he put up a contest for entrepreneurs that were the first at something, the best at something, or did something unique. And this contest was online for, to submit a video of why you should be involved in this and be partnered with Tony. And we submitted our video and put it up there. And there were tens of thousands of, of applicants. And I said to Melissa, well, I don't think we'll get noticed just by sending the, the video in. Ours was good, but I'm gonna take this a step further. So I launched an email and phone campaign to get a hold of- Harassment. <laughs> Certainly was that. I, I was relentless to, I was gonna get a hold of Tony Shea. I was gonna talk to him and tell him about Bombshell and Melissa and everything we're doing. And uh, so I, you know, over the course of several weeks, I kept calling and trying to get through, and I got a hold of Tony's assistant, pitched Bombshell to Tony's assistant, who called me back two days later and said, Tony said go ahead and, and contact him directly from now on, uh, which I did, and 10 days later, we were on a plane out to Las Vegas to pitch Bombshell to Tony Shea directly in a bar in downtown Las Vegas. <laughs> and that the die was cast from there. He loved Bombshell. He, he loved what was going on with, with um, our vision and, and everything, and so that's how we got hooked up with Tony Shea in Las Vegas, and it, it's been a challenging, wonderful dream come true. Yeah, I would think, challenging. You live here, right? Sometimes. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> we have been primarily stationed in Las Vegas for the last three years. We have a condo right above the shop in Las Vegas, and that's how Bombshell started here as well. We lived right above the shop in Carytown for a number of years. And so we're primarily in, in Las Vegas, but we come back on a monthly basis, we're back in Richmond. So that leads me to my next question, and then I want to toss it to the audience. So, and um, I'll let you kind of, you know, free fall here, whoever wants to dive in. But my question was going to be, are you involved in the day-to-day -day operations? Like, do you feel like you have to be there every day? I mean, clearly you can't with four locations across the country, but how do you operate we, I've kind of dialed back a little bit lately only because I feel like I get very emotional about things because it is it's not the same as when you're managing a place for somebody else you you know you get emotional about employees that you have and you get involved with their stuff so lately I felt it better if I kind of just went back into the room again so I'm now um, you know doing clients again but our daughter um, runs the, the Richmond operation here and we have a great team. Well, you have a daughter old enough to run yeah. your business. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so she does that, but we have a really solid team here, and we finally have the team in Vegas is up to speed. But they're still kind of, we're still kind of, you know, babying that. We're still involved, We're day to day, yeah. Okay. I and mean, he's, I, I'm not as much. I mean, yeah, we're more. still we're still involved day to day. She may say she's not, but she's still got her finger in everything. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I had someone say to my like I said, we had the restaurant. My my husband and and his brother, who was a chef, they're every day. And someone says to me, "Well, Yvonne, I guess you'll be successful when you don't have to be there every day." I'm like, "You never ran a business, did you?" <laughs> Yeah, just, let's just like it throw it to the employees, right? Yeah, yeah you, you really have to be there every day. I mean, I think if you check out, then that's when the wheels can start to come off because success is not something that you own in your, in your business. It's just something you rent and rents do every day. Yeah, there you go. Martin and Paula, would you speak to that? Uh, well, I, I uh, do mainly the day-to-day -day operations, so we've kind of divided and conquered. She takes care of some of the bigger projects, um, so during the week I take care of a lot of the, the just, you know, the accounting and things of that nature, and then on the, uh, at the weddings themselves, I still DJ them, and so, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much there at every wedding, and... Uh, yeah, that. we've, we've tried, um, stepping back and putting management teams in place and different different dynamics and they all work well enough but not well enough for us it, no one's ever go going to represent your business and you and care obviously as much as you care so yeah we're very involved when we do leave and, and travel um, we schedule it around our son steps in and, and DJs when he's not able to and um, and we we just plan our life around 
our work, and but we're as present as possible. Yeah. I want to give the audience a chance. Does anyone have a question for either couple regarding their businesses? Yes. As you grew out your business, how did you decide who was going to do what? I, I've just heard you say we're, gonna, we're all going to stay engaged, but at some point, did you decide, okay, you've got this, I've got that, and did that change and when? Between the two of us or the teams? Yes, yeah, just between the two of you right now. I think we naturally work well together and we divided up our strengths and weaknesses and, and I would go to my strength and she would go to hers and then we'd collaborate on making that work together. Okay. That answers your question. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Yes. How do you balance the work-life balance because now it's just work at work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would say that's the toughest part, actually. And we have the unique experience where we live where we work and we work where we live, so that makes it even harder. Um, and raising our kids there as well. Um, but once we figure that out, on once we cross the threshold to come back into the private quarters, you know, if, if one of us brings up business, the other one hopefully stops. Well, wait, can we talk about this tomorrow? Or, but yes, um, when you're when it's 11 o'clock at night and you're laying in bed and you're talking about business, there's a problem. So you have to nip that in the bud and be a cognizant of what comes out of your mouth and when and time it appropriately. Because you're a couple and then you're also business partners, but they, they shouldn't intertwine all the time. Well, that's good. I mean, um, Melissa and Scott, anything like that? About the couple. <laughs> <laughs> the couple. Yeah, no, we get along. I mean, he was my friend first, so you know, we get along really well. And I, I do usually like I'll say, I want this, want this, want this, and then he's the he's the numbers guy. I, I can make anything happen, but he'll 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 will be the one that will like rein me in a little bit. So he's really good for for me that way. And I listen most of the time. <laughs> I do want to talk a little bit about small business and local economy um, because, um, well, really, Retail Merchants Association has done a great job of really focusing on that, but we all know that the big box stores that come in and either make it or, or don't um, aren't really the heartbeat of the local economy, and we, we all think that Richmond's really big, but we're a pretty small town, we're all connected, you know, one degree of separation and all that stuff. but. Um, it, does anyone want to talk about how significant you think small and local businesses are to our economy in general? Do you have any feelings on that, any experience? I, I mean, I think it is really important too, but I'm also not, I'm not gonna be mad when you know European Wax Center came in either. I think it, competition is good. You should have a lot of competition. It keeps you in the game. I always welcome it. Um, yeah, and as long as small businesses are, are adding to their community and, you know, seeing that side of it too. I, I don't like it when it's totally closed down. We're like, I'm only shopping local, I'm only doing that. I think it's not realistic. And I think if you think like that, you know, Amazon's right around the corner with a drone that's going to come down. <laughs> so, no joke, they do it in Las Vegas and LA, they drone it in, like drop it. Um, so yeah, I think you have to see both sides of that. But you know, and, you know, I love Carrie Town. It's awesome. But I also love, I love uh, what's what's this Innsbruck. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to say short pump, but it's hard. You've been in like three states. In the last I know. Three like, hours, yeah. so. Well, you understand it. Two o'clock. You, know, you said. Oh, yeah. Two. yeah. <coughs> okay. No, I, I thought. Did you want to speak on that? The local economy, small well, business. I think just like you, I think competition is great. Um, yeah. Big or small. You know, what we do is very personal. Whether it's a wax or a wedding. Um, it's, <laughs> or both. Sometimes I get a key to a yes part We've worked there. a lot with them, actually. Yeah, and this is the first time we've met. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, so I uh, got distracted. What was I saying? <laughs> um, competition's good, and it's the personability. It's, it's us being connected with a client that these big companies will never have. Um, and they try, what's funny is we should never try desperately to be like them. I think they're always trying desperately to be more like us and to connect and um, they're, they're teaching their, their staff how to be you know, personable and re well, we just do that organically. So I think we'll always have the edge. Will we be cheaper? No. Do we want to be cheaper? So you, you mentioned something about wanting to be like you and, and how you operate. Tell us a little bit about your corporate culture. I think that, um, I 
my husband and I, we always like going to small businesses. It's just a thing we like to do. But in my mind, I'm thinking that the employees are treated better. There's a, a, a smaller vibe, smaller, you know, closer vibe inside the, the organization. How would you describe your corporate culture? Yeah, for sure. Our, we encourage and foster a work-life balance because we kind of went through that ourselves, figuring it out and knowing that one is is your life balance is more important than any job you'll ever do. Um, so we try to give that to our staff members too. And the turnover is less because they know we care. Um, you know, in a, in a corporate world, when you want a vacation, you have to submit paperwork and, and cross your fingers and hope to get a day off, whereas they come in and say, you know, I'd like to go to this wedding in two months. Is, is that okay? And of course, it's always a yes. We'll cover for that. So I think that's a huge benefit um, to people trying to live their life. Scott, listen. Yeah, I think our, our corporate culture has actually become more corporate, we, but we still treat our team members to a fault like our children. And we like to keep them in, you know, in our culture and uh, thinking our way and, and doing those types of things, but we have become a little bit more corporate and there are more channels that we have to deal with. But again, it is still like a family, even though we have over 80 employees, we know all of them really quite well and, and we interact with them like they're our friends and like they're our children a lot of the time, actually. More like children. <laughs> <laughs> but they're good, though. They're good kids. Awesome. So five years, 10 years, what, give us a little vision for what Bombshell will look like in the future, I mean, to the extent that you're willing to share. You can say a little bit, then I don't. I, well, I see, I see Bombshell continuing to be the leader in waxing and hair and things like that, things of that nature. We also just got approved for and applied for uh, accredited schooling for the Southside location, so it's going to be a Bombshell Academy down there, which is really going to elevate what we do at Bombshell because we've found the education in the beauty industry to be very lacking, it's very, there aren't a lot of places to go and when the, the graduates come to, to us, they are licensed but they typically don't really know anything and we have to retrain them anyway to get them up to speed to our level and so this is one way for us to feed our pipeline and to have the cream of the crop coming into Bombshell. That is very cool. I remember seeing somewhere in the information uh, or was it in your bio that you said that you your folks are constantly looking to educate themselves so you follow through on that like that awesome also with health and wellness um, i've been looking heavily into the cbd opportunities that are becoming um, for like um, cbd pedicures manicures facials um, i think that's another thing that's it's going to be a, a 20 billion dollar industry so i have my eyes really kind of set on that right now, incorporating into the, the salon and spa. Okay. Very good. I'll be looking for that. Yeah. That good. Uh, right now we're just continuing with the renovation of our uh, our property. We have one more cottage that's uh, being renovated. That's going to become a more specific uh, location for the bride and bridesmaids to get ready. Kind of a salon-esque yeah. look, awesome. but yet like if you're at home with couches and just nice casual areas. Uh, in a couple of years, we have a road that kind of goes by our property that's going to be rerouted. And so we uh, have a pond there we're going to beautify to uh, become another ceremony spot uh, for, uh, for anybody that wants waterfront style ceremonies. And uh, we'll we close the whole property and entry gates and have it more estate-like, yeah. So is it more than weddings? Do you do corporate stuff as well? Yeah, 98% of what we do is weddings. That's our passion. But when friends call us and want to do an event, <laughs> we, we say yes. We always say yes. Um, and then every once in a while we'll throw in a bridal shower or baby shower, but it's usually someone that we know or, or some kind of connection. But no, we're pretty much weddings through and through. Nonprofit events, we love doing those. So we have a, yeah, a, a charity event, wine tasting in particular. We love those. <laughs> when is that? Yeah, whenever you want. Uh, holiday parties, we, we really haven't um, pitched that much or pushed right. that, but we're open to it. We have a, a space that Sona Bank helped us um, create or restore uh, about two years ago. Or it's been three years. Three years called the gallery, so now we can host um, big events indoors in this lush room, which is lovely, especially in the holidays. So yeah, we're open. We're open. And, and the main thing is, uh, because we book weddings a year, year and a half out, 
usually by the time somebody wants to do their holiday party or corporate party, we might already be booked for that day. So that's another reason I think we do most more weddings than, than anything. Right. So the reason I ask that is I'm thinking, I'm like trying to do calculations in my head, like are there really that many weddings? Do you have any numbers to, well, like what does that look like in this area? Uh, we, for the third year in a row now, we are averaging about over 50 weddings a year. Um, and sometimes we do one, we, we do everything from a uh, strolling brunch wedding, middle of the day, small, you know, uh, uh, in terms of time, three hours or so, to a wedding weekend where 16 guests stay on site, uh, up to 200 guests for the actual wedding. Uh, so we're kind you of have a, rooms on yeah side? yeah we have uh, we have suites and cottages yeah we have suites and cottages where guests can stay the night and that was our original premise that we were kind of an all inclusive kind of destination style package and so uh, so yeah that's that's the we have five or six different packages where people can can choose from and, and so that's I think we offer a variety of options for uh, for different guests so although there's a lot of places now wineries country clubs or uh, breweries that now also start to do weddings I think the fact that we specialize in what we do. Uh, has allowed us to, to book as much as we do. We were actually just voted, uh, uh, Orbis.com uh, voted us the best place in Virginia to get married uh, for Wow, yay! So, yeah. Congratulations, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so again, any questions? I don't want to dominate in case there's someone out there just wanting to know more about Bombshell and Med Convention, yes? One of the things I heard you say is that as you're growing it out, letting go could be a problem because you can't find people who, if you will, look like you and act like you and deliver that product. I just want to confirm that that's what you're thinking on it because as you as you get more and more people and get more cor corporate, then how do you do that? How do you do that? Let it go if you feel like you want to. I think it just by training. You hire for pers I hire for personality and how they're going to treat people. I can train them how to do anything. You're not going to train somebody for five-star customer service if they don't have it in them. I I've tried to do it and failed miserably many times. So I think that's the number one thing. Um, and you know, just having people again a happy culture environment where you know where you can trust them and and they you know there's res mutual respect and. That's, I think, how it's worked for us. So there's no way we could have done what we've done in Vegas and LA also. Um, you know, not having people around us that we can trust. Thank you. Yeah. So do you think having um, a business that is run by, you know, you're married and you're running your business, do you think the business makes your marriage stronger or your marriage makes your, your business stronger or do they, are there more challenges with your what, your marriage because you're in business together? Like, how does that work? Do you see that as a, as a plus or a maybe not so much? He's my best friend. And so uh, we haven't spent a day apart in over 10 years. Over 10 years. Wow. And we don't get, I mean, you know, he's he'll tell me like you're getting crazy or I'll tell him I'm getting crazy, but. <laughs> are you the only one crazy? <laughs> It's usually me, but yeah, it works. I mean, we have fun. I just, I couldn't imagine it. This is our both of our second marriages. I could never have been with my first husband. <laughs> oh, okay, let's take the mic. <laughs> Off the rails. <laughs> it's called Incan Issues. Uh, yeah, I was, um, I was thinking about this, and, and it does, you, you were asking, I think, before, um, if it makes your marriage more vulnerable or stronger. And I think the answer is both. Mm -hmm. I think it does make it more volatile because you've got you know, exponential pressure to be successful as a couple and as business partners, but it uh, more than the vulnerability of it. When you get through those times, it's much, much stronger than it ever could have been without the volatility in the business, growing it together. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm known to ask questions I don't write down, so forgive me, but one of the things that or is in the back of my mind when I'm watching HGTV, and I'm really worried about this, but I'm like thinking, I hope they make it because, you know, Chip and Joanna are so invested in it. <laughs> yeah. I know, I got problems. But do you ever like get involved with that whole thought of like, oh, they're so sweet, there's, you know, it's what a beautiful wedding, and you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I just bite my tongue. Yeah, we, we just wish them well and, and, and let go, let God. Like, that's, that's with them. Um, do you remember in the 
what was the movie? Wedding Wedding Planner? Uh -huh. um, Matthew McConaughey, mm -hmm. right? And J Lo. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> And he, he says something like, uh, or she said, they were picking their wedding song yes. in the car, and they picked something by, what is the song? I can't it remember. was I Honestly Love You by Olivia yeah. Newton-John. And she's like, 50% of people pick that song. Never make it. <laughs> That's like the gangrene of wedding songs. <laughs> For the most part, they're lovely. And we attract pretty cool people, oh. thankfully. Which we're weird too, kind of weirdos, but the, like, you know, if you like them, it's all good. So. Go ahead. We, we, we provide planning as part of our packages, so that's also very helpful because we uh, we have started from, with the client from the get go, so we kind of help them along the way and hopefully help them avoid any uh, major pitfalls, you know, that, that uh, might encounter in, in planning their big day. So you don't have people who come in and want to have this really weird wedding, and you're like, ah, oh, that will not enhance our brand. And how do we say no? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, we merge the two ideas. We make sure we're not giving up anything that we believe in, as far as integrity goes. But it's their day, as long as it's not illegal or you know, there's no like, bring your own chicken or something. <laughs> <laughs> we we help them create an event better than they imagined, whatever that looks like to them. Oh, that's awesome. So I want to ask Melissa and Scott the same question, but PG, Melissa. <laughs> Just, does anybody come in the salon and ask for something and you're like, okay, what? You know, like scary, and you know, it's just that whole awkward moment of saying, I, I don't want to say about this, but it's <laughs> yeah. not PG, so we'll keep it. We'll it's pass the mic. It's not out, it's not so, um, yeah, it's, it's different in Vegas versus Virginia. But I mean, I just, you know, when people are asking for things, I think a lot of times, especially in the areas that I'm dealing with, um, things can be misconstrued, and you know, I, I try not to. You know, I, I try to ask them what do they what do they mean? Clarify, please, stuff like that. So, but I mean, typically we can make it work if it's you know we don't do massage or anything like that. That's kind of an area where, yeah. Well, like what if what if you know what if I just I, you know I wouldn't say this, but what if somebody walks in and says I want my I want a bald head or I want it bald only except for like a ponytail on one side, and you know. You know, based on the person that they look like, they're going to walk out of here unhappy. They're going to tell everybody that you did it to them, and they're going to blame you. Yeah. You know, they asked for it. I mean, that's where the consult, the client consultation would come in. Yeah, and I'm not a hairstylist, but I take other hair off all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> HGTV, we're friends with the Property Brothers, and they are looking for properties in Vegas right now. So if anybody has a, anything they want to be renovated in Vegas, I'm doing a plug, a shameless plug for them. You're friends with we, the Property yeah, Brothers. We have a lot of friends with HGTV. Yeah, they so come cool. into bombshell in Las Vegas. We, I yeah. waxed Linda for her wedding. Oh, yeah. that is so cool. I love them. Yeah. yeah. I want to forget that. <laughs> okay, any final questions? This is so much fun. I, I just have enjoyed this. I, right? Please, round of applause so much. And I, I want you to think about this moment because I really think that we have four celebrities in front of us. And someday you're going to see something on television and you're going to go, oh my gosh, I should have gotten a picture with them. I should have shook their hand. Because, I mean, everything I'm hearing, and I'm not the expert, Sona Bank is, but, the, you know, your, your businesses just can't do anything but just rise. It's just so much power. I couldn't get you to say anything bad. I was just, <laughs> come on, is it hurting your marriage or not? <laughs> We rehearsed before we got yeah. it. Oh, there you go. Well, well played, well played. Well, we, just I just want to say, we just filmed Say Yes to the Dress also, which is fun, in the Vegas location but the UK version, so I'll be putting that little snippet up on um, our Facebook account, so it's fun. Nice. Yeah. So, speaking of which, make sure you like their Facebook pages, look at their website, support. We have to support local business because they are supporting us just by being in our area and bringing clientele and bringing business to Richmond. That helps our local economy and it helps our just the general picture of what RBA is. I mean, who knew that we were going to become the first in beer in the world? Yeah. Who knew we were going to be top 25 in food and wine? And now we're top 25 in music, local music scene. Yeah. And it started with people like you 
who took, took a risk, built a business, and then we just go and enjoy it. And we get to have all the fun. But we appreciate you guys stepping out on faith and building local business right here in Richmond. I salute you. Thank you so much. moved here we were he was 14 and he's like mom we moved from park city utah but he was living in california with his with his dad and he goes where are you moving me to and i'm like i don't know my parents live here but let's check it out and now he's back he's in tech and he's in venice beach and he goes mom i miss richmond so much Aww, so i mean awesome. it is a special it is a special town nice sure. nice thank you so much big round of applause with Mankin Mansion. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sona Bank, for sponsoring and supporting these wonderful businesses.